What's up, everybody? Welcome to Game Spook, episode 600. I am Demon Hatefield. I am your host, as always. Today, I'm joined by Tina Arielmini. Or Tina Amini Deville, which has always been my spooky Twitter name. That was a good one, too. Uh, Sam Slayborn. Scoop! (laughs) And Michael Payne. Swain Scoop! We are, of course, the co-op mages. Split screen co-op mages, of course. Mm-hmm. And we've got a great spooky show for you this week. Lots of spooky emails uh, from our listeners telling us uh, stories about when they, uh, when they had the wits scared out of them by video games. We yeah. talk about some real news about some uh, impressive games that you can now play on your Switch thanks to streaming. But first, I actually learned a new spell this year. Conjurer of cheap tricks that I am. <laughs> I learned a spell. I learned how to... Summon. That's the cue. That's the cue. I learned how to summon a mogwai. <laughs> <laughs> my winter oh heart. My goodness. <laughs> it's breaking. What I, I, manner I, of I enchantment sure, is this? I made sure I'm not going to feed him after midnight and get him wet. I know the rules. Oh, he knows the mogwai noises. Yeah. He's and he likes to hammer on the microphone immediately. That's great instincts. Yeah. Yeah. I think right? the first time Damon brought King into the office, his mouth was all over the mic immediately. And I was like, that's what Damon was like 10 years ago. Yeah, <laughs> sure. You got to start somewhere. <laughs> okay, Mogwai, my friend. Thank you for oh. stopping by Game Spook. I'm glad they're still making Mogwai costumes for children. They converted all the unsold Ewok costumes. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I want Mogwai to Ewok okay. to something I don't even know, probably, and then back to Mogwai. <laughs> Shave it as a, a baby Yoda. It's mm-hmm. whatever. That it was. was probably that horrible Dobby from Harry Potter for a while. Oh, no. That was, that, was a, that was a very cute Mogwai. Um, okay. He was Enough enslaved. Nonsense. Tina. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? He was, in, he was enslaved. That's what was wrong with Dobby. Oh, well, wrong with his life, but not him yeah. as a character. That's yeah. more yeah. of a wizard society problem than a Dobby yeah. problem. <laughs> what I think is wrong with Dobby is that he looks like a shaved Mogwai. A little yeah. bit. He kind of does, yeah. An old one, one that grew really old. Bath time, by the way. Anyway, we begin this week with an email from Ethan. He uh, wrote, wrote in to say, hello, Goose Camp counselors. How embarrassing, yes. Ethan. Doesn't realize <laughs> we're actually co-op, co-op mages. mages. Here. <laughs> I hope that you're all keeping uh, your campers safe and alive with spooky season in full force. What are your favorite horror games from across the generations? I guess that's another way of saying all time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I looked up, I was trying to memorize in a, a not blind panic before this, like yeah, the I generation know by generation where they slotted in. I didn't know if we had to do well, where it. Where did by you generation. start? Huh? Where did you start? Because I did kind oh. of like 80s and 90s, but all the games are like, there's horror games from the 80s, but they're like dumb. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, they're pretty dumb. I think I, I started in the full motion video era because games yeah. like uh, Phantasmagoria, Dark Seed are the first games that were explicitly scary I remember playing. I have no mouth and I must scream. Point I just saw stuff. that game for the first time. I'd never heard of that before. Uh, but Seventh Guest was the dorky game that my friends yes. played. And that had actors, people p- p- paid to be on camera, I should say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, that you know are, are walking are kind of enacting scenes. It's it's like watching a really bad dinner theater, and that was like the horror game. And then there's Alone in the Dark, which is an actual game, but I never played that back then. It depends if you differentiate between horror and anxiety, because Alone in the yeah. Dark had that anxiety that Resident Evil really executed so beautifully, where you move slowly and the thing is coming towards you, and you don't want to die, and you feel very like ooh. Um, but I do think that's different than the horror of, well, the attempted horror of like a seventh guest where mm-hmm. they're trying to be spooky. I hated I that the, for yeah. generations and generations, the idea of a horror game was that they made you feel helpless and and uh, uh, slow. I don't like that idea. So like the start of Resident Evil, the very first Resident Evil, I don't like as much as the remakes, where they're like, mm-hmm. give me a bunch of bunch of action, maybe not enough ammo, but make it so I'm actually useful and then scare me. I like that feeling because I don't feel helpless in real life. I feel that way maybe in a scary dream or something. But I really well, like You're that. an all-powerful I, wizard. Yeah, I'm an all-powerful wizard. Help it doesn't yeah. make sense. But like, I, I remember the first time I was like re- really scared by a game was just like being afraid of losing my progress in like Resident Evil 4 from like an instant kill from a Plagas, which just like <laughs> sucks. You know, there's few save systems. There's very few ammo supply uh, caches. 
and you just like are trying to get through this really difficult game. So it's actually legit scary when a scorpion comes out of like a neck hole and decapitates you instantly because you're like, well, I also lost 45 minutes of gameplay. That's scary. Well, see, that's why horror in general and even just irrespective of gaming is so wonderful a genre because there's so many different kinds of scares. So if you're mm. going the anxiety track, like I, I made a list of just some notable horror games I've played over the years. And like Bloodborne is the kind of thing that scares me because it's difficult. Mm -hmm. um, and Bloodborne had like a more robust co-op uh, capability, which was great for me because I got to like bring a buddy along to help me through. But then you have things like the survival horror element is more about like how great are you with your resources, which maybe my top um, survival horror game is Alan Wake. But boy, did I get stuck in a couple of places where like you're out of flashlights and you have a bunch of people running after you and you're trying to jump between like generator, um, generator energized street lamp to another street lamp. Um, but there are certain areas where you just like, it, it kind of pushes you into a point where it's really difficult to progress, which is not necessarily my favorite. Whereas like Dead Space is all about like the jump scares and some of the gore kind of scares too. So there's just tons of areas you can go through when it comes to horror. Mm -hmm. Probably my earliest experience is House of the Dead 2, um, an arcade game uh, that from the 90s, late 90s. Um, and that was just sort of like, I don't know that it was necessarily scary. It was probably scary for me at the time because I was younger um, and it was very tense. And obviously you had to put quarter in after quarter to actually make it through all of the levels. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, that's more of a like, I suppose, action element kind of like zombies are inherently scary sort of game as opposed to something like um, like Inside, which, which we talk about on Scoop all the time, which is more of a like cerebral kind of um Mm -hmm. psychological scary kind of game you know house of the dead really brings back funny memories because that game is you're that's exactly a type of horror that was like made for like boardwalks or like haunted houses where it's like gore and loud and stuff like that but it's not like that kind of cerebral horror at all and when i think back to my earliest experiences it's also arcade stuff although i don't remember this game from the arcade i remember it from nes but this game chiller was exactly house of the dead it's a light gun game and it's like, you know, 8-bit graphics, but it's all like, you know, like a torture dungeon. And there's like nudity and blood and like limbs everywhere. And it's, it's you, you Damon, I know, is a big fan of Chiller. It, oh, yeah. It's it's insane. And that's the whole point. It was like over the top. And when House <laughs> yeah. of the Dead came out, it was over the top. And it's like explosions of bodies and stuff. That was like tech being used for gore, essentially. And then, it, so I, I, I associate those really closely with each other. There was an evil carnival one that was like the cut mm -hmm. rate. Like Carnival. that I remember was in every what was it called? Carnival. Carnival. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Carnival. It was in every arcade. Had at least one of those. Yeah. Yep. And they, they there's also other arcade era stuff that was like really playing up that gore. Uh, obviously, you know, Splatterhouse came home, and that was like a favorite mm -hmm. favorite I know of this this show too. Um, but I was gonna say like Doom is like technically like I remember being like a little freaked out by Doom playing late at night. I mean that was a, that was a very strange game to play early on because it worked so well and you were in 3D environments and that was you're not used to that already. And then there's just like really loud yelling things and, uh, and again that game is like super gory and uh, you know I got used to it. I'm completely immune to gore now, but <laughs> no, I'm not really. Desensitized. That's what they said, that's what they said yeah, in, in the Senate, then, is that you'd be desensitized to gore for the rest of your life. No. Yeah. No. Uh, I still can't watch the end of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. <laughs> I've still only seen it once. You've seen it like seven times. Oh, I've um, probably, probably seen it over 25 times. <laughs> uh, House of the Dead's a really good one. There's also Typing of the Dead. Mm -hmm. Maybe somewhat oh, less God. scary. Or I don't know, maybe that's more scary. Someone at work made a Typing of the Dead costume one Halloween. Was it Mark Ryan? And he had the Dreamcast Probably. keyboard hanging around his neck and so he could type like this in the zombie costume. That was great. Probably Mark Ryan. Mm -hmm. um, Sam, is Castlevania a horror series? Oh, that's a really good point. So it's based on a bunch of horror movies, but they're yeah. from like a campier era, right? And it's never Universal. Been, it's never been intended to be scary. But but eventually it went pretty gory too. There's parts of it where it's like, you know, oh, what's yeah. that the creature called Legion that's like all body parts? Mm -hmm. There's stuff like that. But yeah, those original Castlevania games are like so that campy side of horror, which is like Monster Squad in the 80s or something like that, you know? Yeah. Which totally counts. It's it's like you have mm -hmm. goofy horror too, um, mm -hmm. like Dead Rising or Dead Island, arguably on the goofier yeah. horror side. Like it doesn't have to be scary to technically be horror, essentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think that's a um the, the, the early 
the 80s and early 90s horror games on NES and Super Nintendo and Sega Genesis, I think they're still like they fall within the horror genre, but I don't think anybody was really being scared mm-hmm. by any of those games. Well, maybe all those, maybe we can define horror as something that you have to explain to your children a little bit if they happen to see it. <laughs> I think this anything is not that has, real. like anything that has zombies, vampires, werewolves, whatever, like any of those kind of horror, classic horror supernatural creatures mm-hmm. counts as horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of yeah, some kind of horror. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. What about gross out horror? Because there's a game that I always ask about. It just is lodged in my brain. It's another full motion video game um, from back in the day. And I've literally never met anyone who's played it. So I'm hoping someone here has Bad Mojo. Mm-mm. I, I think. Um, so it happy sounds familiar. Maybe there's like a, a, a flyer or an ad that I saw for it or something. It's an FMV recreation of Metamorphosis by Kafka, and you play as a cockroach. And it scared me so much as a kid, but because of the concept yeah, of having to live as a cockroach. <laughs> and it's full motion video. So it's like you are a real cockroach, footage of a real cockroach crawling. Oh, come around. on. It yeah, was we, needed, pretty nasty. we needed a proper trigger warning for that yeah. right at the get-go, especially for those of us that have been dealing with a lot of cockroaches in her house. Oh, <laughs> oh no. We've oh, yeah. got ants. I'd rather. That's, that's probably I, the I most not terrifying. Trade you. Yeah. you want ants? <laughs> I would that's trade how you, you get ants. <laughs> <laughs> uh, another couple on NES that I like are Maniac Mansion, which is yep. sort of like, uh, oh, yeah. uh, it's a comedy horror game. Uh, yeah, and it's about uh, like a haunted mansion, which is like a yeah. really fun spin off of that. Yeah, mad scientist stuff is in there. Uh, mm-hmm. Tentacles, aliens, they're all in mm-hmm. there. And then also a game that I play every year at, at Halloween, although I might have to make uh, my case for it, is Shadowgate. It's, you know, medieval fantasy, point and click adventure, but there's lots of monsters. Uh, you're always at risk of your torch going out and, and being stuck in the darkness. Um, and then you, there's lots of ways to die where the text describes your, your death in very gory uh, ways. So. That's a really good part of video game horror is uh, the death sequences. They're so good. Yeah. Well, yeah, they, they can be. Uh, the Immortal is a, a game that has really great death sentences for you. I mean, Resident Evil, I've always loved. I loved You Are Dead. It's just a really funny <laughs> thing that they've kept in the series <laughs> all the time. Well, and Tina mentioned Inside, but amazing yeah. death animations in Inside and Limbo, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I was playing a little Limbo this week. Um, was it Resident Evil 4 that introduced the gory death animations for Leon? That the first Resident Evil. Yeah, there's some pretty bad stuff. There's a lot of things where his head just just gets like completely lopped off, and there's um and there's some yeah there's some really bad ones. And then Tomb Raider had those really similarly after that. But uh, one of the funny things about Resident Evil Four is that uh, there was death sequences you could instantly trigger just by being a goof. Like you could just shoot your if you shoot your gun into the lake a whole lot way before there's ever a lake boss or any point of the game. This giant lizard just comes out and eats you for an instant kill. You can lose like an hour of save (laughs) that. I know no idea. In that game, what's really scary is the chainsaw people. And they mm. cha- you hear it from a distance, goes, rawr, 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 and you're like, oh, no. Because they're really <laughs> hard bosses. They go beelining for you, and they throw all these other, like, zombies to stop you. And they come, and they're a one-hit kill. Like, you can have all of this ammo and all this stuff. And you, if you can't, like, stopping, you can't use them with stopping, if you can't stop the stopping power of, like, a shotgun, you can't stop right. And you're like, but my herbs, my precious herbs. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite kind of scare um, in horror games when you're there's that anticipation that's building, especially if you can hear or see something in the distance and you know something's coming. So oh, yeah. Bioshock did that with like, you know, you could hear laughter in the background and you oh, just knew God. like you were what you were getting yourself into. Um, or if you, you know, you hear uh, like one of the, what do they call little sisters? Am I remembering that correctly? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's right. Yeah. And it, like kind of softly talking in the background. And then one of the most terrifying ones for me until I got really used to some of the cheap shots um, was in Left 4 Dead 2 with the witch. Uh, because you can hear her crying yeah. in the distance, and then as you get closer to her, if oh, you disturb yeah. her, and she starts to growl at you. Uh, mm-hmm. I was actually um, at a PAX once, and someone was dressed up as uh, cosplaying yeah. as the witch, and she just sat in the middle of the convention center. And when people would come up to her, she would start to do the same kind of thing, like growling at people, and then chase after them if they came too close. Thanks, I hate it. The it was the best cosplay I've ever seen because she like really owned it. <laughs> And if you if the, the witch was also a one hit kill, right? Like you would die instantly if the oh, witch. Oh, um, yeah. Depending on your difficulty, you would get incapacitated essentially, and then yeah. if you were on the most difficult difficulty level, it was a one hit kill. Oh man! I'm so glad you mentioned sound though, because I just feel yeah. like in film and gaming, horror is where sound design has like its most grueling and like triumphant accomplishments. 
uh, Bioshock and Bloodborne, mm -hmm. these in specific, like the sound engineering, the way the crows in Bloodborne come at you and it almost sounds like a speaker topping out of oh, just cool. heard screaming. It's so uh, disquieting and uncomfortable. And yeah, all the, what got me in Bioshock was always the mutterings of the actual turned citizens who are just rambling nonsense. Those really got under my Which skin. Which Control used too, right? Um, there's yep. a, uh, speaking advice. of like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, there's a uh, uh, there's like tech advancements like sound, which would really work for horror. And one of those is like flashlight beams. You know, Alan Wake, as as Tina already brought up, is like really famous for that. But there's a couple of games that are just about flashlights, and then they put it in things like Doom and Alien is really famous for that. In, in Aliens games, it's like they turn off everything. You just have like a flashlight. Like that's straight out of the movies. I really, really like that. We, we've gotten really good with lighting. And hey, yeah, technically ray tracing can make flashlight lighting like the best ever. And so there'll probably be some pretty spooky games of this next generation. Yeah, I hope next gen means even better spookier horror games. That would be awesome. Yeah, yeah, and speaking of audio, PS5 has the 3D audio tech built into it. Yeah, so that too. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine they're going to be able to like make it sound like the footsteps are coming up behind you. you know? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's and then, games. With the, who knows what they'll do with the haptic feedback too, because apparently yeah. that's amazing on the <laughs> DualSense controller. So mm -hmm. like they could do some really interesting things with that. Already the VR horror games are too oh, scary for me. Like Half-Life Alex is probably the scariest game I've ever played because of the constant feeling of it actually being a 3D space and someone being right behind you. RE7 Just was unplayable for VR. Yeah. Yeah. Me too, I bailed. So I bailed on RE7. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, the thing I wanted to say about Bioshock is that that was the first game I remember where they they were able to use lighting to foreshadow an upcoming scare. Because like you know the place is dilapidated, there are fires, and mm -hmm. the, the, you see like oh, shadows, shadows, shadows yeah. are being projected. Out. You know you know something is in the room up ahead that you have to go to. Mm -hmm. But and then they, they also with um with the artwork too, like, like you'll be facing a corridor and you have to like make a left or a right, and you can see there's just blood splatter everywhere, yeah. and mm -hmm. people have scribbled like you know words in places. And you're like, oh my god, it's gonna be a boss level soon it's the equivalent of like seeing a like a chest right before a big room opening you're like oh yeah. this is gonna be bad for me yep. yeah or save point. oh yeah when the game yeah. fully heals you you're like yeah, oh, yeah exactly like, okay. like, this, this gift comes with a caveat yeah. <laughs> um i wonder how many games do this but when you guys are bringing up like the tech of the next gen systems um eternal darkness was a was a horror game that was like you know really lovecraftian and stuff and, it, and it's really goofy to play now it doesn't hold up very well but at the time, it used um, like really funny stuff. Like it pretended it was deleting your your saves from your GameCube. Mm -hmm. Like that's amazing. It, it it used this volume thing. It would turn up or down your volume on your television. It would actually put the little green overlay of volume that like you know a lot of televisions had, and maybe yours yeah. didn't. But if you did, it's super weird because it seems <laughs> like there's somebody holding the controller next to you. Yeah, like they yeah, did all crazy. kinds of cool stuff like that, and um, I really like that. So I would love games to be a little bit more meta and i think that all originated with with um metal gear um solid one with psycho mantis would like look at your saves and read your save files and be like oh i see you've been playing symphony of the night yeah stuff like that i love that stuff <laughs> um, speaking of like small tools that that add to your anxiety while you're playing a hard game alien isolation did a really good job with them i forget what the tool is called where you can tell um, when they're, they're, it's a sonar or something. Yeah, uh, it's, it's what they use in the movies to track the aliens. Exactly, yeah. yeah, exactly, to track them. And so you always knew when it was coming, not necessarily what direction or what yeah. level. Um, and it just like, it, it just adds to the scare without necessarily even you needing to see anything scary to feel mm -hmm. it, which is really clever. Yeah, that's the perfect gag in the or, or, or trick in the movie that they use in the game because like in the movie, they make a big deal of like, it should be right in front of us. And it's like, it's because it's under them. And, you know, that's like Orba. such a good twist. Yeah. And it's so good to have that in inadequate radar technology in a game. It just makes so much sense. Uh, a couple of games I want to shout out before we move on are Ghosts and Goblins. Mm -hmm. Does that count? Right. Yeah, I mean, what's funny about Ghosts and Goblins is that it was kind of like the Castlevania thing before Castlevania, where it just threw in a bunch of tropes from yeah. uh, horror, but mainly zombies. Though the rest of it's got a lot of fantasy stuff, but it definitely has monsters. Mm -hmm. Um. And also, uh, uh, Telltale is The Walking Dead. Yep. Oh, sure. Yeah. And that's more of a... Um, I don't know that it was ever necessarily scary, but it was daunting, is is what felt like the biggest horror element. Well, yeah, and there were, like, really tough choices 
the exactly. player had to make where you didn't feel good about either one and it really like stuck in your gut, you know? Yeah, yeah, it made you feel miserable, but like in a different way than being scared. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that in the show were kind of a new era of really well, um, well-conceived horror that was like episodic and what took place over a long time. There'd been a lot of great horror movies up to that point, but like, that's when I really thought like, Oh, games can be these long, really intense stories about uh, human suffering. And they're still kind of fun to play. Um, let's move on to some uh, news this week and uh, concerning a game we were just discussing very briefly control. Uh, another spooky game. Uh, the c Control is now out on Switch, and you can play it through streaming. A game that um, should not <laughs> should not be playable on the Switch is through the magic of streaming. It is uh, that you, you have to play through a demo first. You have to spend at least five minutes in the demo before <laughs> Nintendo will let you buy the game. You for have to $40. finish your dinner before you get dessert. Yeah. yeah it's so, uh, and then you can play it with either enhanced performance or enhanced graphics. Uh, it's $40 there. Um, oh, yep. Yeah, that's about it. Those are the details. I think this is cool, but of course you have to have a, you know, you're locked to your internet connection. So it's not a, 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 a game you can play when you're like out and about with your switch. But on the other side, uh, everyone's spending a lot more time at home these days, right? But why have that demo requirement? I got, does anyone know the reason? Is there any chance that it's like sussing out your switch yeah. situation while you're playing the demo to connect you to the cloud properly? Like why do that? Yeah, P Pear was suggesting it's because they don't want to get a bunch of, they don't want to refund a bunch of people. You, you should be able to see mm. if you can actually do this thing before you pay your money. Otherwise, mm. it's just like this huge refund th thing and bad press and all kinds of stuff. Which, like, when Control came out initially, um, it needed a couple patches before it got pretty stable. Like, mine would constantly, like, if I had the choice between graphics or performance, I would take performance, just knowing what I know about what Control was like for me on a PS4, um, where it would stutter out when there was, like, too many enemies on screen and I was throwing around too many abilities. Like, everything would start to lag and stutter. So I can't imagine if the PS4 struggled, even though this was pre-patches, mm -hmm. uh, what it must have took to get it on Switch and get it pretty stable to the point that they were confident enough to release it at least yeah and this of course isn't the first game uh streaming on switch they did resident evil 7 and assassin's creed odyssey in japan mm -hmm. um and then apparently uh it's a smaller streaming service that that nintendo or i guess 505 games is using to stream this to your switch and people did some digging around and found uh evidence that resident evil 3 remake is also going to be streaming on switch sometime oh. in the not too near not too distant future oh my goodness yeah, I mean, the streaming is the same problems for everything. It, it, we talked about this a million times for Stadia. If you have a bad internet connection, you're not going to be able to play these games, and they're not going to look good. And uh, if you have a good internet connection, then, you know, you, it's an interesting option, but at least, you know, at least this system is not like Stadia in that that's everything on Stadia. And this, you have the option. If you want to try this out, try it out. Control's an amazing game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, IGN's game of the year last year. That's true. Yeah. Although I have a base PS4 and I'm playing through Foundation right now and I'm it's fully patched, but I still get a lot of lag on some of the bigger battles. You're wait, you're, what's Foundation? The DLC. I oh, believe okay. it's called gotcha. Foundation. Gotcha. And then gotcha. AWE, I think, is the other one. Mm-hmm. All right, this is an email from Matt Jones, overlord of the GameScoop Superfans. Uh, he says, I'm not a person who likes scary movies. I get an uneasy feeling in my stomach watching bad things happen to normal people. For the longest time, however, I didn't have a problem with scary games. I think the ability to control some of the outcome by being the player allowed me to feel like I could save some of the characters from having bad things happen to them, which was a feeling I couldn't get from watching a movie. Uh, I have loved playing through Dead Space, especially uh, 2, even though I also enjoyed Dead Space 3. I thought Eternal Darkness and the Resident Evil remake on GameCube were great, and I played through the other early Resident Evil games, 2, 3, Code Veronica, and 4, and really enjoyed them. There were scary parts, sure, but that was okay. I was still able to play and enjoy them. So then this year, I finally got around to trying Resident Evil 7. I hadn't played it when it came out because I was raising two kids, uh, but RE7 was on Game Pass, and given the season, I decided to see how Resident Evil had progressed as a series. I skipped RE6 and 5. I got through the first level and started the second, and I had to stop. When Daddy started chasing me with a shovel in the hallway, I was like, I'm out. My anxiety, which is already through the roof after the first level, skyrocketed, and I gave up. 
This is honestly the first time I've had to put down a game because I just couldn't take the stress of playing it. I've stopped playing games like Civ 2 or Counter-Strike because of obsessive compulsive placing, uh, playing, but never before uh, because of stress. I've tried to figure out what is different. Is it the switch from third person to first person? Is it the aspect of creepy people terrorizing me as opposed to mindless zombies? Did Capcom just get suddenly much better at sound and lighting design to be scarier? Not sure, but good grief. Whatever Capcom was going for, they succeeded perhaps too well. Has the game been too spooky for anyone on the crew to stop playing? Cheers to 600 episodes of my favorite podcast. I guess Resident Evil 7 VR was an example we were just discussing. Yeah. Yeah, try putting it in your face if you don't like it in your television. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, I believe... Jesus. If he's referring to the same time, because Daddy chases you a few times before I think the garage fight, mm-hmm. I have I don't know if he comes back yes. after that because I haven't made it past. But oh, but I think I fight bailed is so at, crazy. Yeah, it's I insane. definitely bailed on one of the just hide in the hallway. The guy is chasing you segments, and I was like, yeah. this is just too much in VR. I can't do it. Well, the mother chasing you around the kitchen part is, is similar to me. It's just like you go in this loop over and over again. You're like, I don't really know if I'm hurting her or if this is ever going to end. So yeah. I think the big the big thing because I honestly did not finish RE7 either. Um, I had been playing through it with a horror my like horror movie buddy friend, my go to, um, and she kept covering her eyes, which is cheating and it's not supportful <laughs> supporting me. Um, and I've told her this before, but uh, so I could I had to stop playing at a point in time. Um, but for me, it was because you, it never let you get comfortable. It constantly kept switching up the pace, mm-hmm. so it'd be like really long and quiet, and then there would be chase sequences, but then there would be like hiding sequences. Um, so it was just constantly switching up before you got a chance to be comfortable as opposed to like to bring it back to House of Dead for instance it's just so consistent Um, and it's just a matter of like this enemy you have to shoot in this location or like this many times or in this cadence but you know what you're getting every single time and you have a gun with plenty of ammunition but when you're like a little bit um, unsure of your footing and they're constantly throwing you for a loop and you're constantly terrified about, well, I could shoot this person five times in the head, but am I Mm -hmm. gonna be screwing myself down the line? So that like just keeps you on edge on every single second. So yeah, if I don't have my go-to next to me to to fuel me with courage, I'm just out. So that's what happened with RE7. Yeah, that's a really astute read of how horror works. I really like that take. Um, I think that the, like there's one part of RE7, just stay on that, which which applies to other games that I've quit out of, where you don't know you don't know if you're going to progress or you might have to play the thing you're not liking over again. And that's what really gets yeah. me about about gaming with horror is that when I'm watching a movie. I know I'm going to get to the end of it. And they might even repeat scares. They might repeat this murder two or three times and you have to watch it. But you know there's a resolution coming and you know there's a time limit. With a game, you're like, well, if I fail this and it was upsetting to me, I'm going to have to play the upsetting thing again. And it might be just this, you know, you're like, is this going to take me two hours to beat? And then you're out. Like, that's that's a, that's a problem with gaming as a, as a genre or, or, or as a medium, I should say, for horror. Like, it, that's a problem. Hmm. Yeah, it the uh, no, go ahead. email also talked about the lack of power, the feeling of powerlessness, and I'm just that brought to mind immediately. So I think there might be some deep seated psychological issue to work out because I haven't thought <laughs> about this game in forever. But have any of you played Among the Sleep? I remember no. when that came out. Clever idea for a game. You are a baby, and. <laughs> Your abilities are as limited as a baby's would be. And mm-hmm. because of you live in like an imagination world, it's uh, things that a baby would be scared of, like the dark. And you're mm-hmm. just, you can, you're in a distorted universe of things that a baby would actually encounter and be terrified that sounds of. sounds horrible. And just the inability, it made me no longer nostalgic for being a baby. You can't do nothing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> can't do nothing. Wow. I don't think I have ever felt nostalgic about being a baby. But you used no, to lack, lack of responsibility. No stress. Well, a child yeah. being like a kid or a teenager, yeah. but I don't know about a baby. Sure. Um, I get envious I, of cats because they get they get to you know sleep and eat me. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> my dog has a baby, it pretty though. sweet. I bailed <laughs> on I bailed on uh, Soma really quickly. Has anyone played Soma? I bailed on no, that. That game looked, looked like too much for me. It's just it's one of those games where the environment and sound design alone was enough to get me. Mm-hmm. And uh, I also promised myself I wouldn't go the full podcast without shouting out nine, the last resort. Please tell me no one's heard of it so I can yeah. delight Nobody's you. Nobody's heard of it. It's there, called it, Nine The Last Resort. Yep. And it features the voices of uh Aerosmith, uh oh, Robert boy. De Niro. 
Wow. And uh, a couple other big names I forget at the moment, but it's all based on the work of Mark Ryden, R-Y-D-E-N, who's this amazing surrealist artist. Uh, one of the creepier painters, I think, uh, kicking around right now. And Robert De Niro's company, Tribeca, did a collaborated on this point and click adventure game with him. And it is the most uh, like disturbing, unsettling game I've ever played. And I always want to get through it and never can. Mm -hmm. And it's just because of the artwork itself. Like it's based on the art of a great artist who's great at drawing creepy things, you know? Mm -hmm. Highly recommend watching a playthrough of that. Jim Belushi is the other one. Jim Belushi's in it. Wait, it's so like mm -hmm. what year was this released? Uh, it's gotta be nineties, probably yeah. early nineties. It's all, it's not FMV though. It's CG and painted. Hmm. <laughs> um, it is, there is something about Resident Evil seven. It's unique in that series. It's just, it seems scarier and, uh, it's, I think it's gorier, definitely more intense. I don't know if it's just a matter of, you know, obviously four, five, six went more down an action route gears of war style, uh, cover shooting. They slowed everything down again. They made it first person. They made it much, you know, uh, you know, slower pace. And you're, but you're not. You're doing more than just like shooting at, trying to get headshots on shambling zombies, right? Yeah, yeah I think it feels when like you you're outnumbered right. too. Oh, go ahead. Mm. I was just gonna say it feels like you're outnumbered by a bunch of psychotic people too. Like you're, you know, it, as opposed to there's more coordination to it, so it's scarier just mm. by virtue of that. Yeah, it's interesting. You say you feel outnumbered, which I totally agree. But it's like the fewest zombies you've ever <laughs> faced over the course of Resident Evil game. I thought the scary when my stomach dropped out was when I realized, oh, I'm not going to kill a thousand zombies. I'm going to yeah. fight these this handful of people the whole time, yeah. which implies well, that sure. that it will take a really long time to dispatch each one. Yeah. I don't really have the fortitude for that. You yeah. know, Dead Rising was a game that, that I, I've tried several games in that series, and because of the overwhelming hordes of zombies, I think that's a really interesting idea, but they don't give you enough to start out, and it's based on a time system, and I hate it. It That's the thing that triggers my anxiety. I'm like, oh, I can't, I'm, I'm powerless. To get powerful, I have to basically, you know, rush, and I can't, like, actually think things out. It just, it's just, it feels terrible to me, and I know that's the intention, and I know how well it works for so many people, but... For me, it's just like it's that is not relaxing game time anymore. Sure. Um, I can't think of too many other examples though of games that try to force that mechanic on you, a timed mechanic, you know. Oh man, there were ones at the time because I remember yeah. thinking at the time, like, I'm I'm not gonna do this anymore. Like, I'm not gonna play games that are like this. Like Pikmin's one of those. And mm. um, it always bugged me. And like now they actually really loosened the timing on Pikmin for the re-release, and then they made the old timing hard mode. Cool. I am looking forward to playing Pikmin 3. This next email is from Big Tony Style. Oh my goodness. <laughs> he writes in to say, around Halloween every year, I always like to play a couple of my favorite spooky games. I popped in Dead Space on my PS3 and was quickly reminded how much I love the franchise and how unfortunate it is that it skipped the current generation. What are some other franchises that, that sat out this generation for whatever reason that you would love to make a comeback on the PS5 or Series X? Space is a good one. I was Dead thinking of great. that too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Left 4 Dead is a big one for me too. Uh, and it suits the horror nature as well. But, you know, we're never going to get into Left 4 Dead 3. So I think that's no? long is that, gone. You think they're just not interested in bringing that back? I mean, but, you know, it's the running joke. There's so many uh, pretenders now, though, right? That's, like, become a genre. It has, but it didn't really work for Evolve, which was sad because I think it had the yeah. potential for it. So I think yeah. it's just a matter of, like, timing and the studio and, and the rollout and the marketing and whatnot. Um, if Left 4 Dead 3 came back, I think people would go over the moon for it. Uh, Ph Phasmophobia is supposed to be a Left 4 Dead-like that's out right now that people are liking. Has Ghosties mm -hmm. in it? Mm -hmm. You know, the thing I always say that I want to come back is, like, the, the the Castlevania that I like, which is 2D Castlevania with, like, you know, Metroid elements. I love that mm. that type of game. And I love it in Castlevania, and I really, really want that to be... It was briefly annual in, like, the early century, and I love that. It was so fun. It's like every... This time of year, I'd be playing, or especially over the, the holidays, I'd be playing in Castlevania. And it was, like, the best yeah. feeling. Missed um, a whole list of answers before I realized that horror game was implied by the questions. So no, 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 I'm, no, 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 no. It can be anything. No, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Okay. I was oh, gonna wow. say he didn't. 
Uh, Tony didn't explicitly say, but it sounded like that's how we were going. But nevertheless, I I, I do think Altered Beast actually. Oh man! Whoa! You want another Altered Beast? Rise from its grave, so they to speak. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they tried one um, last, like last generation, didn't they? Did they? Okay. I don't it know. It was like I, a third it, person hack and slash game. Yeah, that makes sense. That game was like such. If you play it now, it's so funny. You just slowly shuffle left to right and take out enemies. Mm-hmm. It's like such a like a poorly conceived game that like just blew us all away because it was gorgeous. And yeah. it is a an art style that is frankly like unsettling it's a bizarre art style i remember the eyeball plant used to wake me out as a kid um but my if i can answer outside of horror i really want with everything that they've learned on their journey since naughty dog to return to jack and daxter i just want that Hmm. so badly that's cute i think uh wario is at the top of my list too hmm it, it's yeah. it's shown up in like weird permutations, but not as like a hey, here's 300 new micro games. Enjoy. That's what they feel like. You would have a day as an app at some point. Like yeah, really yeah. yeah except Nintendo's given up on apps. Oh, that's right. Was the last WarioWare on Wii? No, they made a uh, they made a 3DS one that was a uh, called WarioWare Gold, and it was just a compilation though. That's it. Like it's just a compilation of WarioWare gotcha. games. Nothing new. It's just kind of reshuffling them. And so like it's been a while since there's been new micro games. Yeah. I'd also, um, love to see Knights of the Old Republic because I never played any of them at the time, and I feel like Same. I massively missed out. And right. I suppose Mass Effect was a bit of a replacement um by the time i came around to things uh so yeah i would love that franchise to come back just to be able to say i participated in it with everybody else and could get the excitement and it seems like it was always an amazing game but maybe i'll return to the old ones since that's the only thing that's left yeah uh my number one pick is something that we keep hearing rumors that it is coming back and that would be perfect dark Ooh, mm-hmm. good yeah. pick I would love another perfect dark in the in the classic style. Uh, you know, they're you know, Joanna Dark is a spy, so they're not super fast games. They encourage you to take it slow, be stealthy when you can. Really big open areas, lots of exploration and secrets to find, and then w- lots of ways to uh, tweak the levels and revisit them for like challenges, that sort of thing, mm-hmm. timing based challenges and all that. You just I hope that's real. Time splitters really badly as well. Well, yeah, great game. Great memories playing Time Splitters. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, anything else that we want to see r- rise from the dead? So Let's much. Share. Yeah. Should we just rattle off yeah. all our lists? Just weirdo <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Kid Chameleon. Well, <laughs> I'd love to see a new Kid Chameleon. I mean, sure. I think there's only ever been one of those. That's right. Like, and yet sure. it seems so ripe for, I mean, it's so easy to make more of them, invent new masks. It would be great. Yeah of my list is burnout midnight club. yes yes mm-hmm. burnout midnight club i loved uh, i used to love racing games and rockstar really filled it with those um i feel like maybe it's too soon to say shenmue but i'm gonna say it anyway mm. uh deus ex I, dead space um portal and infamous which i kind of forgot existed yeah. until i was mm-hmm. thinking about answers for this question mm-hmm. wait but shenmue did come back i know that's why i said too soon okay okay but, like, was mankind it, divided it, last gen yeah, What's it that? needs a real comeback. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think it was last gen, right? Yeah. Which game? Mankind uh, Divided. Day- for Deus Ex. Oh, the yeah. Was, that was la- that, I think that was 360 era. No. 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 Xbox One? No, I played that on PS4. Okay. Was it like ported over or remastered? Yeah, that feels longer. Yeah, long, that feels longer. There, there's been, there hasn't been a Deus Ex well. forever. People are clamoring for that game all the time. Oh, I believe you. I just yeah. quite enjoyed Mankind Divided. Yeah. Me too. Very much so. That's why I want to see it back. Heck yeah. Uh, really Mankind Divider was 2016. Oh boy. Felt like so much ago. longer ago. <laughs> yeah. I saw there's a new R-Type coming out and, and that, that put Gradius Ooh. on my list. I thought it'd be cool to do uh, like a, a really return to form for one of those cool space shooter games. Although maybe R-Type's worth checking out. Yeah, I think the R-Type game is being made by people who really love R-Type, but it's like a Kickstarter thing that they... It's been it's gone to Kickstarter like three times, I think. So yeah. they keep setting these tiers, and then they make it, and then they go to work on the game, and then when they run out of money, they go put it on Kickstarter again. <laughs> well, Damon, that means there's probably a million space shooters that have never come back again, right? Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Dodonpachi. Let's bring that one back. 
Let's yep. bring back. And then I like Contra's last iteration as hardcore. That was really cool. Well, no, because there was Contra. What Rogue? Something. Yeah, no, I'm saying, I'm saying, I, I like the 2D, the 2D yeah. good version of Contra, just like Castlevania. Like I want to play a good that was, version. Yeah, Hardcore Uprising. Hardcore Uprising. Yep. And then Contra Four is pretty good, but Hardcore Uprising was great. Um, let's share what we've been playing. As I said, I just last night I completed my yearly playthrough of Shadowgate, and I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, every year when I play it, I have to look up fewer and fewer puzzle solutions. Oh, so, speedrunner yeah. over I, here. I, I want to yeah, get to a yeah. point where I, I mean, it, if you knew everything, you could do it in like 12 minutes, I'm pretty sure. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I, I'm getting better, a little bit better at that every year. Uh, Tina, I think you posted a screenshot of what you've been playing. I, I have. So, Damon, just for you, special for you, I made sure that I played Watch Dogs Legion last night. Nice. Um, in time for Scoop. Uh, it, it's been difficult to fit in time lately, um, but Watch Dogs is finally out. Um, yeah. been looking forward to it. I actually hadn't played the first two because I kept hearing a lot of criticisms, criticisms from people that I respected, so I kind of passed. Um, but so far, so good. Uh, I think I'm like two hours, maybe three hours in, so pretty much the intro post the tutorial. Uh, it's charming. It's got like the kind of British charm you would expect from the Britishisms, the, the tone of the dialogue, um, even the character selection options. They tell you like what your special ability is per all the, the options that you can go through. And they have like little funny anecdotes per each. Um, so I picked like the grandma that takes a little bit of less, uh, takes less damage. Um, and then because I have like an ultimate edition uh, of the game, I have like a bunch of cool uh, costume options that I rigged her out with, and that was what my screenshot was. So mm -hmm. it's it's pretty fun so far. That's good. I'm glad to hear that. I know Dan Stapleton gave it an eight out of ten, a great out of ten for IGN. Um, I actually I actually really liked the first Watch Dogs, uh, and I was less crazy about the second one. I know I'm in the minority there, but I've been excited to check out Legion. Hopefully, I can do that tonight. Uh, Swain, what you got? Uh, something old and something new. Mm, I have good. been playing Ghost Runner, which I think came out within days of this recording, mm -hmm. uh, and sort of like a Hotline Miami, but first-person perspective, cyberpunk, jumping off wall running, slashing, trying to put together the perfect run so that uh, you can do it without getting hit, so you can progress. And it's quite fun so far. I think I can already tell who's going to betray me in noir fashion. <laughs> but uh, but I'm enjoying like the fluidity of it is great. It's like uh, Mirror's Edge, but it's a little more broken up into chunks, so I find it easier to take in. And then the old one Speaking is I've of been noir. Animated. It'd be good to get Ellie Noir back from the last That's topic. Cool. Sure. I was going to say the old game I've been playing is another franchise that I and probably only I would bring back. Heart of the Alien. Does anyone know the Out of This World franchise? Uh, oh, yeah, I mean I love Out of This World. Yep. Yeah. So I've been playing Heart of the Alien, the follow-up to Out of This World, which to me is as seminal as like Land Before Time is to a lot of kids. Oh, when that, that heart, when they, when the alien and the man become friends, oh, that's such a big yeah. deal for me. Uh, how are you playing it, and can you reveal how you're playing it? I am playing it on my PC, and I would have to look it up. I'm emulating it, but I forget the name of the emulator. I just didn't know if you're playing it on a Sega CD or something. No, I wish. Um, yeah, the ending to that game is really, it's kind of a downer. Oh, sorry, spoilers. Yep, it is. <laughs> now. I've seen the burned out Alien City many times yeah. at this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Sam, what you got? Well, Damon, I've been playing Breath of the Wild. Cool, oh. cool. I'm playing Master, Master Mode. It's a, a very, very difficult uh, version of Zelda where everything is overpowered and has like levels above you. And you can't really kill anything in it, so uh, you just gotta gotta avoid everything. And I was thinking about stealth in it, but it turns out that you can get Majora's Mask, and Majora's Mask makes it so the book goblins and the Lizalfos and everything they ignore you. They come up and they sniff you and they'll follow you around if you accidentally nudge them or something. They'll like they might fight back uh, if you set them on fire. They definitely fight back. But um, if you ignore them, you can just go around just loot. So I, I've done this like really fun like loot circuit of the whole game, including Hyrule Castle. I have really powerful weapons. I can take out the really tough because you know some of the the, the shrines have those uh, guardian challenges, which are really hard. I'm trying to work my way up to those. And last night I got the Master Sword, so uh, I feel like I'm over the hurdle, over over the hump of difficulty in that game, and mm -hmm. I can beat it again on Master Mode, which was a goal, goal of mine for a long time. And it's been really relaxing and fun to return to that world. It's very quiet. 
It's very oh, open. Yeah. And especially when you're sneaking and not fighting all the time, it just feels good. It feels great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I love the sound design in that game. I love how the music might just be a little yep. pia a piano trill. Yep. That happens. It's so cool. I love it so much. And sometimes you're just like in the grass and the wind's blowing through the grass and the sun's, sun's shining off of it. And it's just remarkable. And they added in a bunch of stuff with the DLC, like Majora's Mask. Like you can instantly call your horse now. It'll just warp next to you. Like they did all this like quality of life stuff that was actually, you know, in the guise of like super powerful ancient armor or whatever, but it's like great. So it makes the game really, really replayable, even if it's super hard. Cool. Uh, I have been playing one other game recently that might um, be of interest to Sam. It's called Alwa's Legacy. It's an indie Metroidvania that where they uh, really tried to make uh, a very classic 16-bit feeling Metroidvania. Nice. So it's a little bit slower paced than, definitely slower paced than, you know, the DS era um, Castlevania games. There are fewer enemies on screen. The controls are a little bit stiffer than you might expect. So there's lots of challenging platforming. But I think they were really go trying to go for a, Recreate a game that could have been made in the early '90s. It's got really nice pixel art. There's an mm. op there's a, a large open world where all the dungeons are connected to. Uh, everything's connected. Yeah, so it's pretty cool. I've been enjoying that one. Playing that on Switch. Uh, I believe it's also out on PC. It's called Always Legacy, okay. and I think it's a sequel to a game that I never played. Um, before we do video game twenty questions, I wanted to share a. A uh, crazy story from our listener named Travis. He says, hi, Game Spook crew. My name is Travis. I'm 32. I live in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, I've been a listener since 2017. You're now the only podcast that I still regularly listen to. I recently lived in a tree for 72 straight hours in the middle okay. of October with minimal gear and the only form of media I consumed while in the tree was the latest episode of Game Scoop that had released while I was up there. I lived in the tree to I lived 72 in the tree. times. <laughs> I lived in the tree to bring awareness to climate change in a lighthearted and hopefully funny way and to promote the launch of my new YouTube channel, Climate Change Cheddar, where 50% of all the money that comes in through the channel uh, goes directly to climate relief efforts. The cheddar is money. Mm -hmm. I was out in the country and it was spooky. I heard coyotes howling all night long with cows going crazy and mysterious footsteps around the tree in the leaves every night. Oh, no. It was probably a deer, or was it? Mm -hmm. uh, since this is your special Halloween episode, I uh, wanted to share my spooky recent experience with you. Yeah, that sounds crazy. When, when I heard him say he was living in a tree, I just pictured the great Deku tree, and I was thinking, oh, he's inside of a tree. But no, he just meant like, you know, in the branches. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> living... If you can call that living. He was yeah. held off the ground by a tree for 72 hours. <laughs> Good on you, though, like Travis. A, like a decked yeah. out tree house, you know, multiple rooms, some pretty string lights. That sounds yeah. pretty Glamp good. Yeah. Glamping. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> Damon, can we take off our beards now? Sure you can. Yep. Just oh, shave yeah. it. Oh, <laughs> Talk about being That's horrible. Uh, okay, because you got to focus on other things now because okay. that brings us to video game 20 questions. Our suggestion this week comes Whoa. from DR. He just provided initials DR. Let um, the questioning begin. Also, I wanted to say I was staying in a very remote place recently and there was uh, footsteps around where I was staying all night in the forest and it was definitely deer and you could wake up and you could look at the deer and where you could hear them is because it's autumn and there's a bunch of leaves on the ground and those deer are so loud. I'm like, come on, deer, you're just going to get eaten. What are you doing? Crunch, yeah. crunch, 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 crunch all night long. And I just want to mention that now Sam has a bib of old man hair and it's not, I don't like it. Well, I normally have that. You just can't see it because I'm using a different camera angle. Mm -hmm. This is me. <laughs> this is me. Hey, it except me. me as I am. Come as you are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are we playing 20 questions? We are. Yeah, we're in it. And the tree, the tree fellow sent this in? Nope. DR oh, okay. did. DR, okay. Maybe, maybe he's a doctor. No. <sighs> okay. Is that a hint? So obviously we have to start with, is this a spooky game? Oh, that's a great way to start. Let's go for it. He's deciding whether or not. Is this a spooky not. game? <laughs> it's happening. I like when uh, Damon turns his head. I it just looks like he's in like an all vinyl costume. And he's just gone. And he just, his well, grin. It's, it's a good trick for him. It's a good trick for him because now we can't read his facial expressions. Yeah, that's yeah. true. 
which is which is really 19 of the questions for us. Mm -hmm. uh, you would not consider this game spooky, but as we discussed at the top of the show, it falls into the, the okay, horror so genre it's, still. It's horror genre, yeah. Ooh. Hmm, is this Do based on a license? No. Do you mostly interact with the world through the barrel of a gun or guns in this game? <laughs> no. Is this a survival horror game? No. Are you a human? No. That's five. <laughs> you may have at one point been a human, but you're not anymore. Animal horror. Was or this vampire game horror. on the current generation of consoles, by which I mean not PS5 and series, but current, <laughs> current. <laughs> yeah, we're not there yet. No, it is not playable on current gen consoles. Okay. Are you a vampire in this game? <gasps> No. That's oh, one piece. Ooh. So you, you, could be a, you could be a zombie or a ghost if you were a, a human. Ghost. Yeah, yep. that's true. Well, well you yeah. could be a ghost. Mm -hmm. Or a mutant. A <laughs> hmm. But you don't, it's not survival horror and you don't shoot guns in it. It's weird, You right? could be a robot? Could you be a robot and still be for a horror For a horror yeah. game? Or Future a horror, horror. game? Yeah. I think we're making a really good game right now is what's happening. This is this sounded <laughs> yeah. really good to me. I guess you could be an alien, but I can't think of a game where you're an alien. Is it worth asking if you're alive, a living thing? Because that would get ghost, zombie, and robot. <laughs> That's true. All right, let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. We should have done that before Vampire, though. Do you play as a living thing in this game? Okay, well, we need to set, we need to establish something. Right? What is life? Go. Right? What is, here we, we go. Because <laughs> there's the living dead. That, that doesn't count. Zombies, zombies don't dead. count. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Then no, you aren't. Okay. So this it's is Stubbs the Zombie. Humus. It's like Stubbs the Zombie or like some game like that. What's the other? Um... Grim Fandango. Yeah. Oh, there you go. You could be playing as a skeleton. Mm hmm. Should Would Ricardo eat? love this? <laughs> Identify with Ricardo. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good question. Bring um, Ricardo into it. I'd like to I don't call think it is a good question. Ricardo. I think you're being nice. <laughs> <laughs> when is Grim from? Is that from the 2000s? Uh, or 90s? We could do, is this from before 2000s? Yeah, but if we don't know the answer to that, we're, I know that's true. <laughs> that doesn't really help. <laughs> yeah, but I do, need, I do want to know that. Is this from before, the two, before 2000? Yes. Okay. Yeah. What about Decap Attack? Great game. Oh, yeah. wonderful game. Uh, that's a game where you play as a skeleton. You throw your skeleton skull head at things to kill them. I think mm. you're a mummy, and that's someone else's skeleton, if I remember correctly. <laughs> what are Could you talking about, Swam? <laughs> you fly with your feet. I know that. Um, are you thinking of Zombie Nation? No, Decap Attack. You're a mummy, and you shoot your pink stomach out. Your stomach has a oh, face on right. it. You do shoot your stomach out. That's, that's right. right. <laughs> and you fly with your feet by tap and jump. Mm -hmm. uh, I used to cheat with the turbo controller and just fly yeah, over just the flutters. entire level. That's yeah, right. Like that Yoshi flutter. We uh, do have we mentioned this game yet? Yeah, let's do it. Let's cheat. Have we mentioned this game yet? Yes. That's Ooh. 10. Wow. Wow. Is this oh, for dude. the Sega Genesis? Yes. Oh, then it's not Grim Fandango. I take it back. <laughs> yeah, it's Decap Attack. Well, you um, do the honors. You mentioned it. I, can you think of any other ones we mentioned? I, I yeah. was leaning towards Grim Fandango, but it seems yeah. like Decap Attack is well, the I was just thinking of any other Genesis games we've mentioned. Yeah, is this Decap Attack? Let's go early. It sure is. <laughs> Very <laughs> impressive. Very impressive. I was worried it would be too hard. Um, and you guys wouldn't even know the game, but multiple well, people requested it, and I took we that had a as hint. Fun. We had a little hint behind you. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there he is. He said Ricardo no. spoiled it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I believe Swim is right. I believe you're a mummy. Mm -hmm. At least that's how the story goes. Okay. Good thing we didn't go the skeleton route. But you do yeah, stack a skull on your shoulders, and yeah, yeah, you do like you throw a skull, but I. No, you, you throw like your the, stomach. He's right about that. What it is, it's like, I think the Mario mushroom when you grow up is when you put a skull on your head. Because normally you have two mm. eyes in your stomach and it's always shooting out and you're like this, <gasps> you're basically a decapitated body but still is living. Decap Attack is an adult mushroom kingdom citizen with bandages wound around them. Yeah, this is a huge conspiracy for me. That, <laughs> wow. Yep. Sam. 
Yeah, you like that? <laughs> Jeff's kiss. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you for the suggestion, Dr. Uh, dear viewers, Guys, do you think I looked yeah. more like this guy or this guy? Because <laughs> I think I, mean, I pulled neither this now. Guy. Yeah, you pulled the box art, not the photo. Look, he went to ASU. <laughs> Uh, viewers, listeners, if you have your own 20 questions, suggestions, or questions for us, email them to me at the email address gamescoop at IGN.com. And that is all the scoops that we have for you this week. 600 episodes. I can't believe it. Thank you so much to everyone who uh, tunes into the show every week. I know we have a lot of fun making the show for you. It means a lot that you have spent so many hours of your life listening to us talk about video games. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Swaim. Thank you to Tyle working behind the scenes. My name is Damon. Everybody have a great Halloween, and we're out.